This is Kali Linux operating system running on my Android phone. In this video, I am going to show you how to download it, install it and set it up. If you are finding this channel for the first time, this is Bezin Tech. On this channel, we upload videos on Linux tutorials. And we also upload videos on helpful Android tips from time to time. So if you are interested in this, click the subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications to be notified whenever we upload a new video. Without wasting much of your time, let us get to the video. So you're going to launch your Tamox application and you're going to update your Tamox repository. So you're going to do that with the command pkg update. Okay. You're going to enter the command pkg update and pkg update should, should update your Tamox repository. Now, after updating your Tamox repository, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to give storage permission to Tamox. You're going to give storage permission to Tamox with the command Tamox setup storage. Okay, so um, after giving storage permission to Tamox, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to install a package called wget. Okay, to install wget, you're going to use the command pkg install wget. Now, after installing the wget package, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be downloading the installation scripts for Kali Linux to Tamox. You're going to do that with this command. I'm going to be pasting the link. You're going to get that command from in the description below. So make sure you check the description for that link, okay? So you're going to copy that command. You're going to copy that command and you're going to paste it on your Tamox terminal, all right? So I'm going to head back to Tamox now and I'm going to paste it there. You're going to click on enter and it should literally take seconds to download. Now, after that, the next thing you're going to do, of course, is you're going to give executable permission to that particular, um, to the installation script because the installation script won't run if you, if you don't give it executable permission. So you're going to give it executable permission with the command chmod plus x. Then you're going to enter the file name, which is install net on Tatamox. Okay. So after that, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to download the Kali Linux rootfs file. With this installation script okay to do that you're going to just simply type the command dot forward slash then the installation script name which is install net on tata mox okay you're going to enter that and you're going to click on enter and that is going to download the root fs file of kali linux okay so you're going to be asked to choose the version you want to download in this case we want the full version okay so you're going to click on full and you're going to click on enter and it is going to download the full version of kali linux on your android phone now in case you face this problem i'm looking at here after the rootfs file has completed download it just displayed an error and you know it didn't install kali linux don't worry just be sure that your rootfs download was complete okay as long as the rootfs file was successfully downloaded what you're just going to do is confirm that the rootfs file was downloaded okay and as you can see the rootfs file is this kali net on the rootfs file showing in my Tamox terminal. Now, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to run the installation script again. Now, when you run the installation script again, the installation script is going to automatically check for a rootfs file, okay? As you can see on the screen right now, it told me that it found the rootfs file. Do I want to delete the rootfs file and download the new file? What you're just going to simply say is you're going to click on no. So it is going to use the existing rootfs file to install Kali Linux on your phone, okay? So I'm going to enter no now and as you can see, it is now extracting the rootfs file. Now, this particular part of the video is only necessary if after downloading, after the rootfs file has been downloaded, it showed you an error, okay? If it doesn't show you an error in your own case, the installation should just complete automatically on its own. Now, once the installation is complete, you're going to log into Kali Linux with the command nh. Okay, you're going to log into Kali Linux with the nh command and um, once you're logged into Kali Linux, you want to, of course, connect Kali Linux to GUI. To connect Kali Linux to the GUI interface, you're going to enter the command kex password. You're first going to set a password for the GUI interface, then we're going to connect to the GUI interface. So to do that, you're going to enter the kex password command. Then you're going to create a password the password should contain at least six characters okay now that we have created kex password it is important to you know um find a vnc application that you're going to connect the gui with for this video i am going to be using net on takex okay to download net on takex simply go to simply go to the net on task stores website and download the net on task store application i'm going to be leaving a link in the description anyway 
you're going to download NetHunter store application. After downloading the application, you're going to install it. And after the installation has been completed, you're going to open the NetHunter store application and you're going to search for NetHunter Kex. Okay, so you're going to install NetHunter Kex. NetHunter Kex is the VNC application we're going to be using to connect to Kali Linux GUI interface. Once NetHunter Kex has been installed, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to open the application, of course, and you're going to change a few settings in the application. So what you're going to do is, after opening the application, it is going to ask you for permission to file. So just give it permission to file. And the next thing you're going to do is, the connection type, you can either use basic VNC or ultra VNC, okay? And then um, in the VNC password section, you're going to enter the password you created earlier on Kali Linux, which was the Kex password. You're going to enter that password. So now, after entering your Kex password, the next thing you're going to do is head back to Thermos and um, connect your Thermos to GUI interface, okay? So to do that, you're going to enter the command Kex and, and that should launch Kali Linux GUI interface to the localhost one. Now that it has been connected to the localhost one, you're going to set your VNC connection settings to the localhost one, and you're going to change your phone to portrait view. Of course, you want your phone to be able to, you know, to rotate so that you can enjoy the full GUI experience. So you're going to do that and you're going to connect to, and you're going to click on connect and you should have this screen right here displaying on your phone. To get the best experience out of this, I'm going to advise that you connect your phone to an external keyboard. But even if you don't connect to an external keyboard, there is a keyboard built in on the Neton Takex app. You can also use that. So in case you want to buy an external keyboard, I'm going to leave an Amazon link in the description below where you can get the external keyboard that I used in this video. And um, yeah, this is how you install Kali Linux on your Android phone and enjoy all the, you know, hacking experience that you do on your PC. <laughs> that will be all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Goodbye.